Most people are only using 1Password for their login details. I use 1Password as a digital safety deposit box. Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of our productivity training videos. Now, it's 2025 and let's face it, most of our lives are completely online and digital. We've got passwords, pass keys, passports, driver's licenses, credit card details, API keys, license keys, all set up online, all scattered all over the place. And most people don't really care that much about their security until something bad happens. This is where tools like 1Password come in and can save you a massive amount of time and headache later on. It's not just for storing your login details, it's about protecting your online and your digital life. I've been using 1Password for about 10 years and here are five of my favorite features. Number one, and probably one of the best features, is the biometric login capabilities. So if you are unlocking 1Password on any Touch ID, Face ID, or biometric supported device like a Mac, iPhone, or Android, you can unlock the 1Password app using Touch ID. So instead of having to type my normal password in, which is slow, I can just click the Touch ID button and I can confirm using the Touch ID here on my Apple Magic Keyboard. Or if I don't have a Touch ID supported device, but I have an Apple Watch, um, one password will notify me on my watch and I can double click there to unlock my account. One of the main reasons I purchased the Apple Magic Keyboard was so that I could use this Touch ID button and unlock 1Password that much easier. Of course, this also works really well on Face ID enabled devices like the iPad and iPhone. I just open the app, scan my face, and you can see the app unlocks straight away. To enable these features, go into the settings of the 1Password app, go down to security, and you'll see which unlock options are available depending on the device that you are on. So here on my Mac, it supports Touch ID and Apple Watch. On my iPhone and iPad, I will see Face ID options. My second favorite feature is one-time passwords. This means you don't have to sit around and wait for SMS verification codes any longer. So now, when I log into a service like Xero, 1Password fills in my login, and you saw that very quickly, it filled in my two-step verification code, and I'm in my account straight away. I'm not sitting around waiting for a text message. To enable this feature, you will need to log in to the website or service where you are setting up the two-factor code. Now, not every service supports two-step verification, although it is getting very common these days. So logged into Xero here, for example, I'm in my account settings and you can see there is a multi-factor authentication option, which I can set up. Now you are looking for an option like this, where it says use an authenticator app. We're gonna use our own app. You can see there's a QR code here. And this is where I need to go to the 1Password app on my, my phone or iPad or device. And I'm gonna edit this login. And you can see in the add more options, we're gonna use uh, add a one-time password. And I'm gonna click the QR code icon and watch out for the microphone. We're gonna scan that code and click save. I've now added a one-time passcode to that login. Now I need to verify that I've set up this code. So if I have got my Mac in sync with my iPhone, which I do, or I can just simply read off the phone, I can log in, I can put in that one-time code, and this is gonna significantly improve your security compared to SMS verification, as you are protected against SIM swapping. This is where a hacker, if they are engineering an attack against you, will call up your phone company pretending to be you, and they will move your phone number to their SIM card. So if they have your password, and they can get an SMS verification code sent to their phone, they can now get into your account. But if you use a one-time password in 1Password instead, you are much more protected. Okay, feature number three is you can add location data to items that you create in 1Password. Now, the easiest way to do this is on a mobile device because it can see your current location. 
And when you add a location to a login item or any other private information, 1Password will show you that login item when you arrive at that location. One of the ways I use this is I have a location pinned to the co-working space that I work from. So when I'm at that co-working space, I simply open 1Password and I've got access to information like my printer pin, our network details, and the login details to access my co-working account. I even have a location attached to my Costco membership number. So if I arrive at Costco and I forgot my membership card, I open the 1Password app and it just shows me straight away, based on my location, here's your membership number and hopefully they'll let me in. Feature number four is how 1Password is set up to store all sorts of different types of information. So of course, most people are gonna use it for their login details, but you can put any private or sensitive information into 1Password and as I said in the introduction, this is really where you can start to use 1Password as a digital safety deposit box. You can create secure notes, you can store credit card details, which is actually very handy for filling in online forms in checkouts. You can put in membership numbers, uh, licenses, medical records, crypto wallets, API keys, anything private and sensitive that you want to keep secure. I love this because it means wherever I am, I've got access to all of my private information. I've been on flights before and I'm filling in those customs forms, but our passports are in my backpack in the overhead locker. No problem. In one password, I've got all of our family's passports ready to go. I also have a bunch of secure notes in one password where I just store useful information. One of them, it's a bit morbid, is called In Case I Die because in my household, I look after a lot of things like our mortgage, insurance, there's my business, things like that. And if in an event where I died, the last thing I would want is for my wife to be worrying about what do I do? How do I get access to Paul's uh, email, um, bank accounts, other important accounts that she needs to access? I mean, number one, we have a shared family account, so we have lots of shared logins. She can access whatever services and accounts she needs. But in this note, I've written down things that she will need to do, arrangements that I would like her to make with my business. And it's so worth it now to put some time into protecting yourself. Protecting yourself against hackers and just keeping your digital life and identity secure by using 1Password, but also protecting your loved ones. So if something did happen to you, they've got access to information and they know what to do. I actually feel a lot more comfortable just knowing that if something were to happen to me, my wife doesn't have to worry. She'll still be upset, I hope. But uh, a lot of the information that she needs to take care of things is ready and available to her. And my fifth and final favorite feature of 1Password is pass keys. Now you can see from my Google account here, I've created a pass key. What is that? Pass keys is the future of logins. This is where services like Google will eventually at some point phase out alphanumeric passwords entirely because they are actually by their nature quite weak. By adding a pass key to your login details, you can then log in using biometric security features like Touch ID or Face ID. For example, I'm logging into my Google account here and it's suggesting that I log in using a pass key. And so without the password, actual alphanumeric password having to be filled in, I can log into my Google account just by authenticating using Touch or Face ID. Now in the One Password app, if you go to Watchtower on the sidebar, this by the way is another extremely useful area of 1Password. It gives you suggestions on how to make passwords stronger and more, more secure. And I can see here there are 44 services where I could set up a pass key. So let's do one for Wise. What you'll need to do is log in to whatever service you are setting up the pass key for. I've come to my settings here and we can see there is a pass key option. I'm gonna follow the instructions on the screen and I'm gonna set up a pass key. Now I have to do some additional verification here, so I will input this uh, code to verify who I am. And now it's uh, the 1Password app is suggesting, do you want to update your login and add a pass key to this login for, for this email? Which yes, I do. So I'm just gonna click save. And that's it, I'm done. I've created a pass key for this account. And now if I go back to the 1Password app, I can see there is a pass key attached to this login. So that is just a new alternative way that I can log into this account without actually the password having to be filled in at all. I hope I've been able to highlight some of the really useful ways you can take 1Password to that next level. 
OnePassword is without a doubt one of the most important services that I pay for to protect my personal and my business online life. I made a video not long ago about the must-have Mac apps that I install on a new computer. I will link that up here. And I mentioned in that video that 1Password is always the first app I install because it has all those important logins that I need. Did I miss your favorite feature of 1Password? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.